And so the computer basically moves the print head and the base layer here yeah. back and forth. Well, this one comes out the same way? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this one. You can really see the detail in this one. If you really look close, you can see all those little layers. It's just incredible. Oh, oh, he's got it. Let's go, baby. Get him out of there. So folks, we're doing something a little bit different today. We got Andrew behind the camera, hey. of course, and you're actually a very important part of today's video, guy. Okay. Now we're filming this in reverse. There's some things out of place here because it is nighttime now and we're about to go to some scenes that are in the daytime. Let's not <laughs> ask questions. Let's just assume that this is all legit. About a week ago on your channel, Andrew, yep. you did something that I stole and I'm now making it my own. God, these gnats are inside <laughs> me. That gnat buzzing me? I think he's in my eye now. You had some fishing lures printed. Yep. 3D printed. Yeah, man. Which, for those of you who don't know what that is, because I didn't know what it was until not too long ago, but there's a machine. There are machines that can take a design of a fishing lure or any object, like literally anything. And there's machines that can make a replica of it out of plastic that looks exactly like the object that you were trying to create, if that makes any sense. It's going to make a lot more sense here soon, but that's the basic premise of your video, yep. was you had a fishing lure made. And if you guys hadn't seen that, I would encourage you to go visit AO Fishing and check Check out his video. It's actually doing really well. Like it's killing yeah. it. It's kind of blowing up right now. Thanks, man. So that means this video should do really well. Yeah. Oh. Because I'm kind of doing what Andrew did, basically. But it's okay with you if I try this, right? Oh yeah, I want okay. you to. That's good because we've already done it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if the whole thing's already done, you guys are about to see. But um, I tell you guys what: if we can get 10,000 likes on this video, I will go back to GL Robotics and I will have them design another lure. And I, this is the second part of what I need you guys to do. First of all, like the video, and we'll do another one. But second of all, get in the comments section and flood it with your suggestions of what type of lure you want to see made. Now keep in mind this has to be a hard plastic lure. It can't be like a soft plastic worm because the plastic that they use it gets really hot and then it cools down and it becomes hard. So it can't be a soft plastic. It has to be like a hard bait. But get in that comment section. Tell me what you guys want to see and I'm going to look and see which comments have the most likes and then when we do part two if we hit the 10,000 likes we will do the one or two that were the most liked in the comment section. So I called my friends over at GL Robotics in uh, Dothan, Alabama, Southeast Alabama, and they have these machines that can 3D print fishing lures into like exact plastic replicas. I mean, that's just that's the best way I can describe it. You guys are about to see. But I got the plans from Andrew to make this top water lure, and you guys will know exactly what it is when you see it. It's crazy looking. We gave them some plans, and we went to go check up on them. If you guys want to check out GL Robotics, there'll be a link in the description to their website, and they can make they can hook you up and make you a fishing lure or any literally any object. It's pretty crazy. So we get them to designs and we're gonna take you now to their little place and have them kind of explain how it's done. But by the end of this video, we take that lure out fishing. We put it together, we put hooks on it, we tie it to a, a rod and reel. I think it was actually this one right here. And we cast it out and we did some field testing that involved actually catching fish. So this thing not only was nothing and got turned into a fishing lure out of plastic, but it actually caught fish. So you guys have been begging for a like homemade DIY lure. This isn't quite that, but it is something extremely unique that not that many people have done. So let's take you guys straight to GL robotics and they will explain to you how this is all going to be done okay so this is like okay so like two different pieces like there's the the head piece and that's the piece that, that rotates a little <laughs> the plopper a little plopping tail okay. so it was designed in two pieces and you know, basically they they do a file uh, in a CAD system and then they'll oh. send that over to here and I'll put it in a slicer like this and then this program will slice it into individual layers oh, okay 341 to be exact jeez that's crazy and, uh, yeah, that's a thin that's a really thin like I can't even do the math on that, but that's <laughs> that's really small small yeah, small sections see that. oh yeah all the, the layers in there uh -huh. are the 340 43, is that what you said? Golly, that is so cool. That is crazy. So it builds it up, it starts like this, and then just adds layers on it. And that's how they work, it's really neat. We make all kinds of things on it, for the house, for other people. I, that's what I was gonna ask you, is like, what do you guys typically use this kind of technology to make? Like, Actually, typically? I've gotten a lot of entrepreneurs here, locally, that mm -hmm. have created products, and they want me to um, help them develop that. Right, like make it into a real thing that you could hold in your hands. Yeah. So you got an idea. Idea of what something might look like, but you need to put it into an actual object so where you can, you know, look at it and see it. So that's yeah. kind of where this comes in. Yeah. Before uh, 3D printers, you would have to spend 10 grand on a mold. <sighs> 
and wow. uh, before you could even prototype your product. Yeah. Right. Jeez. In injection mode. Now you can take it to me. But this doesn't cost ten thousand dollars, right? No. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm sure that's doesn't. good. Okay. But you haven't gotten your bill yet. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's really cool. I can. You know, I never even really thought about using this for non-fishing stuff because, of course, that's that's all I do. So that's the first thing that popped in my mind when Andrew told me about the one he made. I was like, well, yeah, let's go. Let's go see how this works. But you could do this with literally anything. I can make anything. anything. I can make anything. Well, what else? Can we look at my uh, this cool go. looking the machinery? Yeah, let's go look at it. I'm printing this in a, a type of plastic it's called ABS. Okay. It's a, a more industrial type plastic. It's a stronger, uh, hold up better. If we want to fish this thing for a while, it should hold up a little yeah, bit better. Yeah. Okay. And um, it actually, the nozzle temperature on there is 255 Celsius. Okay. So it gets pretty warm. Yeah, it's pretty hot. And then that bed is 110 degrees Celsius. So, so it's, it's, help... this thing is just like laying the layer one at a time. Just yep. one little layer, but it's got those 340 layers. So that's, that is incredible. Get close, get tight in there, Andrew. Look at this thing. That it's so um, cool. Yeah. Because you, you can see it. That's the little, yeah, it's just putting one layer on at a time. I printed it in white also. The way the 3D printer works, it actually takes what we call a filament. This is an extruded plastic that comes from a manufacturer, uh -huh. and it's in different types of plastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so this has to be a fairly precise diameter for uh -huh. it to work right in the uh, extruder. Okay. But once you get that out, we'll just install it. Oh, I see. It's up, it's up top, and that's what... Yep. Okay, so the thing is pulling it down in there. I see. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, it's pulling a little bit at a time. And so it remelts the plastic uh -huh. right there at the tip, and lays down the layer and then the computer tells it exactly where to move and so this thing has a x y and z axis on it mm -hmm. and so the computer basically moves the print head and the um the base layer here yeah back and forth and that's how it tells it that is, where to print that is crazy i just i looked up and i saw it's like a spool of like a like a line spool a fishing line spool <laughs> exactly except it's, right. it's got the plastic that it, and it's sucking it right down in there and it's melting just a little bit at a time that is incredible I mean, you can barely even see any come out of the actual like little nozzle. Just, I'm sure it's like microscopic. It's 0.1 millimeter. Yeah, I mean that's that point, say that. point one millimeter. I mean, you couldn't even you couldn't even see that with a naked eye that much. Yeah. God, I mean, it's just nothing. The biggest thing is you can find unique items that you might not be able to find. Absolutely. I'm, my mind's just like racing right now of all the yeah. little things that you might think up, but you don't, you can't necessarily put your hands on it. I noticed the smoke alarm too. I'm thinking it, it gets hot in there. So that's just to make sure that it's just a safety precaution. when you step away that the things don't uh, catch on fire. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. yeah. It, it has a thermistor and uh, the thermistor of course tells the computer how to regulate the temperature. Right. And it has two cooling fans. And for some reason, if the thermistor were to fail, then you could have a runaway. Gotcha. Which is, um, pretty rare. Yeah, that's good. We're going to take all the safety precautions we can. Absolutely. Wow, that is hot. But yeah. You can feel how it heats the room. Oh yeah, no, it's warm in here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's hot. You don't want to be touching. Once it hits the air, I'm guessing it, it and it's such a thin layer, it probably dries really fast too though, right? Yeah, and these cooling fans help it here. It's got one here and here. Could you touch like what's like right there without burning yourself? Yes. That's yeah. cool. So it's like instantly um, It'd be a little warm, but yeah, you touch it. that is why that all the time. So it heats it that much and then it cools that much. Is that why the layers are so like what's what's the reason for the layers being so small? You know what I mean? There being so many layers. The, is that just how it works? Well, the smaller the layer, the less likely you're, you're to see the lines in the layers. Okay. So even though it, it is 3D printed, you can still see. Can you oh, yeah, see you can. Well, if you layer? if you got the lighting I just right, lighting. you could see. There we go. Yeah. Like, and uh, I made yours even smaller so that you get a nice finish. And, wow. Okay, so I see what you're saying. So it's going to make it look a lot better. It will. It's gonna be like it an takes aesthetic longer to thing. do that, but yeah. it, it'll look better. Yeah. And perform better also. This is a really good representation right here, guys, of how thin these layers are. I mean, look at this. This is probably, gosh, I don't even know, a hundred or more layers, but they're they're just they're like microscopic how small they are. That's crazy. So what do we just, do we just pull them, do we just pop them off or? Yeah, so um, the best thing to do is this comes off. Oh, okay, off. that comes off, okay. Yeah. And just flex it a little bit. Here, just pull it, you can't break I'm it. Scared. <laughs> I'm scared, I'm gonna, oh. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh no, it cracked. Nice, so that's top piece. Number one right there, you can see the little eyeball. And then we got the little tail, the plopper part, if you will. That's gonna be the little plopper, plopper tail. Sweet, number one. Well, this one comes out the same way, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Look at this one. You can really see the detail in this one. If you really look close, you can see all those little layers. It's just incredible how they all come together to make that exact. That is crazy. Little plopper tail. Yeah. Oh, me. broken. <laughs> <laughs> Judging from it, I guess you're gonna run a, a wire through the middle of it. Yep. Yep, to connect these two pieces and then we'll put some little, I don't even know what you call them. glasses on. <laughs> I shouldn't film this. <laughs> got to put some hooks on it. Got to put a little split ring on the front end so you can tie line to it. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, you've done it, so we'll have to run some, I guess, a steel leader through here to get that bass back piece connected. But we'll leave a little bit of space. That way it catches the water and just spins around mm -hmm. behind. Run the steel leader through it. It'll be just about the right weight that we need. Suspect we can even... You can't break this. Yeah, this is. This is pretty tough. Dude, we could like, we could like put googly eyes on this thing too. Yeah. It's got the little eye, little eye sockets. We could do some, some kind of eye work. We could put some, maybe some designs on this thing. It's going to be pretty, pretty sweet. Well, thank you guys so much. This is awesome. This is exactly what we needed. Glad to do it. Yeah. Now we just got to go fishing, Andrew. What do you think? Are these, how do these compare to the ones that you had made? I think they're sturdier, man. Yeah. They look pretty, uh, pretty good. Yeah, they look the part. I can't wait to see what they look like all together. All right, since I'm not around anybody, I'm not going to wear my mask. Just so you guys can hear what the heck I'm saying. See that but, beautiful face. Yeah. As long as we're not like within six feet of somebody else, I don't see why you would even need a mask. So, okay. You've done this before, right? You've taken yeah. these 3D printed pieces. For sure. And you have created a lure. So walk us through real quick behind the camera. What do we need? Like four things? Yeah, I would say I like to use a treble hook with a little feather action. You okay, know, like yep. a top water. Right. Definitely some hooks, obviously. Yeah, yeah. for sure. One. And uh, a steel leader. A steel leader that runs through the body of it right. that's going to hold the two pieces together right right okay and then like a thing on the end of it that actually you tie the line to right and then is that it yeah still leader and then hooks. we need pliers to do some pinching and yeah. to do some some, some and maybe a couple on metal pieces just in case metal pieces for what what a little what clamping piece? of the wire oh okay i got you okay well let's just i mean we're in the fishing section why don't you just guide me where we need to be here okay all right so from what you're explaining to me it's starting to come together in my mind so like something like this right this is just a, just leaders, right? Yep. So these these tiny little steel leaders, we would just cut this thing off at like, what, like three or four inches, just long enough to where it can go through the bait, right? hold the pieces together, leave that part on the front. That's what we tie the line to. So that part will be exposed out the nose of it. On the back, we'll run a hook, a treble hook, clamp yep. the steel leader to where the hook can't go anywhere. Yep. And then also put a hook on this front piece of the cable too, right? Am I understanding that correctly? Exactly. So you've got the two pieces held together by a steel leader, hook on the front and the back, but the space between the plopping tail in the front, that's what's going to allow that plopping tail to catch water. Yep, right, exactly. and allow it to pop, 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 pop in the yep. water. Okay, okay, I'm starting to understand this. So, so this will be enough, right? This will be plenty. Yeah, for sure. And we just need some like normal size treble hooks. I don't yeah. see any with the feather tail, buddy. Yeah, we're going to either, we're gonna have to ax the old feather tail and just go with some regular treble hooks. What size are we going with here? These, these guys look pretty good. Yeah, they look juicy. That looks about right, wouldn't you say? So uh, you could whack one. How many are in here? It says there's five. I don't see. Are there really five in there? Yeah, there are five in there. That's plenty, dude. You think that's right? I think it's big enough, though. They look a tad bit small. Size six. I don't Heck, know. Do that it, could man. work. That could yeah, work. I like so them. This is it. This is literally all we need. Yep. And some pliers. We're golden. Let's uh, put our masks back on, buy this stuff, see you guys out on the water to complete the build, and hopefully catch a fish. It's like a cast with the old three oh wow that's a that's old bird's nest but it floats that's a good uh good start this is the next day by the way we kind of ran out of daylight yesterday but me and andrew have got the bait assembled put together with a hook on the back okay i'm just checking some action out here um okay it's not really plopping as much as it's dancing it is dancing though did the one that you had did it plop a couple of them did but a couple of just kind of yeah it's kind of dancing a little bit let me show you guys like the like how it has turned out and believe me i understand it looks very crude but you also have to remember this was a put together version okay so there's the whopper plopper i mean there's the white whiteness of it. there's the, the two pieces you've got the little tiny little cord what, what do you call that andrew the uh the steel the leader yep. like, like leader yep. material and you can see how it's running from the beginning right there all the way through the body through the tail piece and it comes out the back and there's your little split ring right there with a little treble and i mean it looks it looks the part it's just not it's not quite ploppering Enough. It's not really giving. Oh boy. And the only thing I can throw is bird's nest with it. <laughs> oh, I'm in the shade now. I really have just resorted to twitching this thing. It just doesn't plop that well. But I mean, this is a 3D mold. I mean, what do you guys expect? You know, <laughs> these lures don't just come out of the package acting right. You know what I mean? 
all right in the pads. Never gonna get that thing back. It doesn't have a bad action though, except when it gets like stuck on something. 100 degrees kind of hurts the top water proposition, just a tad. Oh God, here comes another SUV. Get out of the road with that camera, you crazy guy. If people see big cameras, they will freak out. I mean, it's a guarantee every single time. This thing's gonna get bit though, it has to. It looks too good. The real question is the one treble going to be able to secure the fish catch here it's kind of plopping a little bit it gets plopping a little bit when i pop it like that it's definitely doing something oh man casting this thing is rough rough dude okay. when, when you straight retrieve it it looks actually okay look at that i mean it's, it's rolling over there's a bunch of bait chasing it. you see how some bluegills and stuff chasing it <laughs> that would be something a gill on there so you think popping or that straight crazy retrieve is going to be the, the move I feel like the slow motions are always going to be better. The slower popping. That big old turtle chilling. My guy's chilling. It is a scorcher, my guy. Holy crap. Hey, I was stuck on something. I thought we were about to lose her. This thing's too strong to be lost. Let's hit this turtle. Oh, dude, he turned on it. Look at him, he's chasing it. Oh. The turtle's chasing it. He's chasing it. No, I don't want him to. Of course he's going to eat it. Look at him. I wish a bass would come along and just like punch that turtle in the mouth. <laughs> it's like he gets close and he's like, um. It doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't feel like what I'm used to eating. Oh, oh, dude, he missed it. Gosh, darn it. I don't know if he ever had it. Tell me, you guys. Oh, and I completely missed this spot. This thing's kind of hard to cast accurately. He got slammed by something. Man, I think that bottom triple hook is gonna come into play. Probably so. See, I think he just completely missed it that time, just in general. I don't think he ever had any of it. That was not a turtle. The first action on the 3D printed lure. Yeah, it's a good sign, but man, it's freaking hot. <laughs> we need these signs to come faster and to be better. It's like on some casts, it's like really whopper plopper like. In other casts, it doesn't like plop at all. It's really crazy. Like that looks good just reeling it. It's like spinning and it's got a real nice erratic action to it. It's kind of kind of plopping. God, that freaking wind. Here we go, some wind to our back. Finally. Dude, this is this is the spot right here, bro. It's shady. Like this, this is it. It's not gonna get any better than this. It's a shady, shallow, grassy little wind come on i mean if a fish was ever going to eat a top water in the middle of the day this would be the spot oh my lord i'm about to lose the lure right here andrew Woo -hoo, that was close that was close my guy oh <laughs> I just scared that freaking bird out of there. Did you see that? Wow, okay. Look, casting this thing, it's just extremely light. It's really hard to cast. I can't explain it, but for those of you who have tried to cast really light lures on casting gear, it's just not that easy to do, okay? Whoa. We're about to get squirted? No, they're across the street, but they came on really loud. See, the problem in here is there's not that much grass, though. Dang it, Andrew. Swim out there and get it for me. Woo, that was close. This thing is freaking tough. We did a good job on this thing, buddy. I didn't make it. It was your philosophy. It was your life goal to make your own lure. So now you don't have to achieve any more of your goals. You're good. Dude, these crocs suck. Oh my gosh, something was waking behind it. Do you see that? What the heck? Why didn't it eat it? I'm not crazy, right? You saw something waking on that thing and come like right up behind it. What in the world? That wasn't a turtle. Wow, okay. Second bit of action, well, third bit of action. We've had a hit, we've had a turtle trying to make love to it, and then we got that, whatever that was. Well, what do you want me to do? I gotta try to get it out of there. Ha! <laughs> Andrew, don't be scared, dude. Dude, this lure is screwed, man. It's gone. What are we going to do? I don't know. Ah! Yeah. 
No, I'm not gonna retie it. I will do no such thing. I've never retied in my life, and I'm not starting now. We fished the lure as is. Look, it's completely fine. There's only six nicks in it. It's fine. Wow, how have we kept this thing so long? It's pretty incredible. Dude, whoever wears Crocs, I'm sorry, but we can't be friends. It's the most garbage piece of footwear that I've ever touched these beautiful feet. Can I have them? Yes, please. Let me have your flip flops. But you just put the nasty feet all in there, homie. Well, it wasn't feet weren't nasty. It's because I got it in the mud. Oh, oh, he's got it. Let's go, baby. Get him out of there. Yes. Andrew. Dude. Let's go, baby. We were starting to lose hope. <laughs> There's the hope right there, guys. Woo, dude. We came back over here again because we were like, there's just no way. Last time we were out here at this little pond, I mean, we were smoking them on top water. And that wasn't exactly first thing in the morning either. Just to remind you guys, right there. Oh, you can't really see it, but yeah, that's the same lure. <laughs> I got his spike in my hand, so let me uh, grab him. Check it out, he's cold too, that's crazy. Boom, baby, 3D printed lure, 3D real life largemouth bass right there, guys. On the back treble. We weren't sure if one treble was gonna be enough. Turns out it was. I, I was worried he was gonna come off in there. Like Dude, as I was reeling him in. Yoink. Yeah, that was a relief. I had this horrible feeling as I was reeling him in because I reeled him right over past it, you know? But he was going to come off and then go down in that hole, which Lord knows where that leads to. Dude, oh my gosh. What a relief. Do we have to keep fishing? I think so. We do? Do you not want to? Well, I'm just saying, this has been a grind, dude. It's so freaking hot. I mean, the thing worked. It worked. This is as homemade as it gets right here. I mean, this is freaking... That's putting Marlon Bates out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Old Marlon Bates. His craftsmanship is probably a touch better. I'm going to make one more cast because I do have kind of a rule in my life. Like, if you catch a fish, you got to, you know, if you're going to change spots to change lures, you got to make one more cast out there because it just kind of seems like silly not to. Look how much I sweated, bro. Is that so bad? I guess the whole shirt could be wet. You know what we should have done? <laughs> okay, so, yeah, what is this thing, right? You guys saw it in the thumbnail. How hard would it be to rig this thing up, though? The front's kind of jacked, man. Yeah, the hole doesn't go all the way through it. There's some issues here. We have to do some rigging, but we probably could. What fish is going to hit this, though? <laughs> Torpen. Yeah, this would be like a saltwater lure. Yeah, so the reason we have this that you guys saw in the thumbnail, this freaking, how big is this? Eight inch by something? We had the same people, GL Robotics, make this for us as well. Just, I mean, it's kind of like a joke. I wanted it just to have, and we're still gonna put it together, I think, just so I can like have it in my fishing man cave or something. Cause I mean, how often do you see a whopper plopper or a plopper style lure that's this big? I mean, now to put it together and to fish with it, that would be really cool too, but that's gonna have to be for a saltwater series or something. Yeah, we had a great time down there with the folks. I'll link their website in the description if you guys wanna check them out. They're in Southeast Alabama. They're the only place that I know of around here that does stuff like this. But more importantly, hit the thumbs up button if you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you go check out Andrew's video over Yo. on AO Fishing because he was the first person to do this and then I just ripped it off. <laughs> just stole, Snatched. stole the video. But um, you know, he was fine with it. So I think we're good here. What lure should we do next? That's the real question here. I mean, it has to be a hard bait because it's gonna end up being a hard plastic so it has to be kind of a hard bait thing but what should we make next i mean topwater popper walking baits a swim bait like a jointed swim oh. bait you know how crazy that would be i bet you could make a giant you, well i mean god you could make one this big Dude. now plastic it's not going to sink though well we'd have to do some modifications maybe like a wake bait like put a bill yeah. on the front of yeah. it okay. but like have it wake i don't know there's a lot of things that could be done so please get in that comment section and let us know what you'd like to see us try next with the 3d printing if you are new, hit that subscribe button. Join the Lojo Outdoor fam, the best subscribers on YouTube. Make sure you enable all notifications. That way you actually get notified when I drop a new video directly from YouTube. But anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. We grinded over the course of a couple days to make this happen, but we did it by God, and we really hope you guys enjoyed. So without further ado, we are getting out of here on to the next outdoor adventure. Fist bump, we out.